Well, hello and welcome to Unit 3. We are now on to quadratics. Uh, you've done a lot of things with quadratics. Remember what a quadratic is. When we talk about quadratics, all that means to you is that we have a function where the biggest exponent... Ah, my, we're struggling early. It's not letting me write. There we go. X squared, where the biggest exponent is squared. So X squared plus 3x minus 7, that is a quadratic. It is a quadratic because it's got that x squared, okay? If there was like an x cubed in front of it, no longer a quadratic. That would be a, a cubic function, but that's not what we're talking about in this chapter. We are talking about quadratics. The key to all of these problems, and we're going to do this for quite some time, if your biggest exponent is an x squared like that, your shape is going to be a parabola. Okay, that is a very important concept that we're going to see all the time. So anytime you have an x squared, that is going to be a parabola. Now that shape can change a little bit depending on which problem you're dealing with, but in general, you're going to get a parabola. And so that's what we're going to work with today. We're going to graph parabolas. We're going to graph them in a very specific form today and understand how that works. We'll graph a different form tomorrow and then kind of work from there. All right, so today we are talking about vertex form. In vertex form, graphing parabolas is pretty easy. All right, this number right here, whatever is added or subtracted inside the parentheses, that is going to shift your graph left or right. Okay, left or right. And it's a little bit tricky here because if it's plus 8 right that, if I'm telling you, hey, it shifts left or right and it says plus 8, in your brain you're probably like, oh, yeah, it's positive. It's going to move me positive. It's not. We're going to shift left or right. And we are going to do the opposite. So do the opposite of what your brain would tell you. If it says plus 8 like that, then what it's really going to do is that is going to shift us left. We're going to do the opposite. If it said minus 9 like this one right here, that is going to shift us right. Seems kind of weird, but if you don't believe me, you could plug in some numbers and it will do that for you. So inside the parentheses, it shifts us left or right. This thing right here, this plus k, plus 6, minus 2, when it's tagged on the end like that, that is going to shift us up and down. And this time we do whatever it says. So if it tells us uh, plus, that is going to move us up. So this is going to shift us up. That minus 2 right there is going to shift us down. So if it's tagged on the end like that, it's going to shift us up or down. Okay? And we've got one more thing. We've got this negative A. If you have a negative right there in, up in the front, that is going to flip us vertically. Okay? Flip us up and down. So, like I said, this is a parabola if we work like that. Okay? That's a positive parabola. If we have this negative sign in front, like that right there, now my shape is going to be the opposite of that. It's going to be flipped down. So it's going to look like that instead. So that negative right there is going to flip us. And then the last thing we have here today is this A value. That A value in front, when we multiply it by something, that is going to stretch our graph. We will show you some different examples of that but it's going to stretch us. So imagine me taking that parabola and pulling up and down. If I pulled it up and down, hopefully you'd recognize that that would make it a little bit skinnier um, as we do it. All right, so that's our idea. We're going to start off here by finding the vertex. That is this point right here of the parabola. And to find that, we just do what we said here. We shifted to the left 8. So if we go left 8, okay, cool, that makes us negative 8 as our starting point. And that number right there is shifting us up and down. So if it shifts us up and down, that's our y value. If we shift up 6, then it's negative 8, 6. Done. Next one. Minus 9. Oh, that minus 9, it takes us to the right 9 because we do the opposite. That minus 2 is our y value. Since it's not inside of parentheses, we don't have to change it. It's down 2. Ah, I need to restart my computer. It doesn't like me very much today. The minus 3 inside the parentheses, so it moves us left to right. Since it's minus 3, we do the opposite. It's right 3. Uh, there is nothing tagged on the end. So since there's nothing tagged on the end, I didn't shift up and down at all. It's just 0. Last one. 
what is added inside the parentheses. Well, there isn't any parentheses, so my x value is going to be 0. That plus 10, it's tagged on the end. It's after the square. So if it's after the square, that's going to move us up and down. It moves us up 10. Okay, so we found the vertex of each one. Let's do this. So we're going to put it all together here. Okay, x plus 2 minus 7. I know it's a parabola because it's squared. This is in vertex form because I see the parentheses squared. x plus 2, we're going to change the sign. It's negative 2. That's going to move us to the left 2. That minus 7 is going to take us down 7. So that is my vertex, negative 2, negative 7. So I'm going to graph that. Negative 2, negative 7, that is my starting dot. That's my vertex. Next thing I'm going to do is identify my A value. So my A value is this number that goes in front right here. My A value here is going to be a 1. All right. So I'm going to just graph a couple dots for you so you see what's happening here. So we plugged in negative 2. What happens? Okay, so this is going to be x. This is going to be y. If I plug in negative 1. So in other words, I go to the right one. If I go to the right one, negative 1 plus 2 would be 1. 1 squared is 1. Minus 7 would get me negative 6. Okay, let's try another number. Let's plug in 0. So plugging in 0 hopefully is pretty easy. If I plug in 0, uh, 0 squared is 0. Or I'm sorry, 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 7 is negative 3. So 0, negative 3. And then let's try one more. Let's plug in 1. If I plugged in 1, it'd be 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 squared would be 9. Minus 7 would be 2. So 1, 2. Okay, and this is a U-shape, so it's going to mimic this on the other side as well. So we get this shape right here. Boom. Boom. And we graph parabolas so much, I suggest you learn the shortcut, this pattern. So here's the pattern I'm referring to. The pattern is going to be 1, 3, 5. And here's what I mean by that. I go up 1, over 1 and make a dot. Then I go up 3 over 1, make a dot. I go up 5 over 1, and make a dot. That is this pattern. If my A value is 1, my pattern is always going to be 1, 3, 5. It allows us to graph it faster. We could do a table like that, but memorizing that pattern, since we graph parabolas so much, uh, just makes it easier. The next question, an easy question, hopefully, is the vertex a maximum or a minimum? So this dot right here, is it the highest point on my graph, or is it the lowest? Well, think about it. If it opens up, that vertex is always going to be the lowest point because it grows up from there. So since this thing opened up, we know that that point right there is a minimum. It is the lowest point on my graph. Then one last thing here, the axis is symmetry, and that's what allowed me to take these dots and flip them over. So how could you draw a line on this graph that would split it directly in half? This right here is the axis of symmetry. It's going to split my graph in half. So think about that. It's a vertical line. It crossed the x. Ah, it's not letting me write. It crossed the x-axis. So if it crossed the x-axis, it's an x equals line. And what x value did I use? It's x equals negative 2. Notice that that is the same number as my vertex. Axis of symmetry is the line that splits us in half. Hopefully that makes some sense. Let's do some more. Vertex, boom, 5, negative 3. Flip the sign inside the parentheses. That moves me left and right, so that's going to move me right 5. That minus 3 is taking me down 3. So right 5, down 3. My A value, that's the number that's in front of my parentheses. In this case, it's just 1. So since it's just 1, I've got a simple 1, 3, 5 pattern. So from that dot, I'm going up 1 over 1. Up 1, 2, 3 over 1. Up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 1. Up 1 over 1. Up 3 over 1. Up 5 over 1. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. There's my graph. Done. See how easy that is? Right 5 inside the parentheses, down 3, and then my pattern is 1, 3, 5. Let's do another one. Minus 7. All right, that minus 7, it's inside the parentheses, so I do the opposite. That minus 10 is tagged on the end, so I'm going to do what it says. Right 7, down 10. Whee! That's this dot right there. My A value this time is a 2. 
And so instead of my pattern being 1, 3, 5, I'm taking that pattern and I am multiplying it by 2. And so I'm taking 1 times 2, so it's going to give me 2. 3 times 2, which is getting me 6. And then 5 times 2, it's 10. So what that tells me is my new pattern is 2, 6, 10. So I'm going to go up 2 over 1, up 6 over 1, up 10 over 1. There is my new graph. One, two, six, ten. And if you look at this shape, it might not look a whole different, a lot different. It looks taller, but it's not really the tallness that I care about compared to my other graph. It is skinnier. Okay. When you put an A value in front and that A value is bigger than one, it's going to make it skinnier. Like instead of a two, if that was a 10, it'd be really skinny. And the opposite would be true. If it were like a one half in front, then that graph is going to get wider. So just be careful with that. It's a little bit strange. Is that vertex a maximum or a minimum? That vertex is a minimum because it's lower than everything else. Axis of symmetry is x equals because it would be this vertical line right here. Whatever my x value of my vertex is, x equals 5. This is a minimum. And the axis of symmetry is x is equal to 7. Let's do two more here. Negative, it's a parabola, so I'm always identifying that first because it's squared. Minus 6 is taking me right 6, plus 5 is taking me up 5. There's my starting dot. It's a parabola. Uh oh, I got a negative sign, and so I'm going to flip it. My normal pattern, oh my gosh, I need to restart my computer really bad. My normal pattern is 1, 3, 5, but because my A value is negative 1. Instead of 1, 3, 5, it's really going to be negative 1, negative 3, negative 5. So here's what that means. Down 1 over 1, down 3 over 1, down 5 over 1. There is my graph. Same thing we did before. The only difference is it goes down now. So what does that mean about my vertex? Is this vertex right here, is that a max or a min? Hopefully you recognize it's a maximum. It is the tallest point in the graph. Last one, plus 3, all right, inside of parentheses, so we go opposite, negative 3, plus 8, tagged on the end, so we go up 8, there's my starting dot. Normally my pattern is 1, 3, 5, uh-oh, I've got a negative 3 as my A value, so I'm taking each of those numbers and multiplying it by negative 3, so that gets me negative 3, negative 9, and negative 15, Woo! let's do it. 1, 2, 3 over 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 over 1. And 15 is going to be too far, so I'm not even going to graph it. As long as I got a little bit here, I should be good. My graph would then kind of fall off the face of the earth right there. Boom, go down. It should look a little skinnier than this graph. It doesn't look a whole lot skinnier because it's hard to tell, but it is. All right, so again, going back to the start, we know it's a parabola because it is squared. As soon as we look at this graph and we see that it is squared, we know it's a parabola. Whatever is added or subtracted inside the parentheses, like this plus h right here, that's going to move us left to right, and we do the opposite. Whatever is tagged on the end, the plus or minus k, that we're going to shift us up and down, and we do what it says. So if it says plus, we go up. If it's minus, we go down. And then the last thing, negative in front is going to flip us up and down vertically. And if there's a number in front, that's going to stretch us from our normal pattern of 1, 3, 5. It'll stretch us to whatever it is, 2, 6, 10, uh, 3, 9, 15, and so on. That's graphing problems in vertex form. Not too hard. We'll get a little bit harder tomorrow. Hope that helps.